and welcome to Talk FCB and I'll come back here to the eagerly anticipated episode 2 of my FIFA 20 career mode with FC Barcelona and I have to start by saying what an incredible response to the first episode. I really didn't imagine anything like that because so many of you were really excited by it and actually there it's inspired me now to really be consistent. I want to complete this series, I want to give you guys a fantastic time watching the progress of this Barcelona team. And so, with two very important games today and transfer deadline day, there's lots coming up in this one. Let's do it. And as you can see here, guys, you finished the last episode on two out of two wins. We switched in our last game to ultimate difficulty, but we do still remain top of the league, but we're being closely followed there at the summit. And coming into this game against Osasuna, as you can see there, it's the final game before the international break. So with that in mind, I am going to make some changes coming into this game. And in particular there, in the back line, Junior Firpo, I want to have a good look at him. You've got Samuel and Tutti there. I really wanted to see Jean-Claude. Todibo and Musa Wage. Apart from that though, going forward, it's as we were. Let's go to a stadium here that in real life we drew 2-2 at, but we well, we intend to win. And certainly in real life, going to Osasuna, even though they're a newly promoted side, it is a tough place to go. They're not an easy team to face by any means. And certainly in this game, we're going to hope to follow up from what we started in La Liga so far this season. Two games and two wins. And hopefully here, we're going to maintain that 100% record and hopefully score a few goals in the process. And before kickoff arrives here, guys, what we should also do in this game is keep a very close eye there on our attacking options. Have we got enough there in the final third, both the starting 11 and on the bench to go on with this season or do we need to dip into the transfer market that's going to be coming up at the end of the game we're going to be deciding who we go and sign but we're underway here let's get the win Junior Frappo now playing out to the back to Ansu Fati was really, really bright there in our opening two games. Moving into midfield now, De Jong onto Griezmann, who can just about win it back there well. Griezmann looking for that forward run of Frankie De Jong. Oh, oh is it? he's given a penalty. He's given a penalty there. I got my shot away. It was on target. It was saved by the goalkeeper. But in FIFA, that can happen, can't it? The defender there is coming across. He can't stop himself. De Jong goes down. Penalty here for Barcelona and a chance for an early lead. And I don't like penalties. I really don't like penalties. And that's why. <laughs> and that's why right there. We have missed the penalty. Lionel Messi there to the right-hand side. Goalkeeper. It's a nice height. Probably there. I should be aiming low. I'm sure many of you in the comments are going to tell me what I need to do. But whipping it in here. Let's see if we can get on the end of that. Not quite there. Falls to Ansu Fati on the edge of the area. But his shot is also blocked here. Quite a frustrating opening 12 minutes in Pamploma. Here's Griezmann though. Again, De Jong making that forward run. De Jong into Lionel Messi on his right-hand side. What a hit that was. Was. Messi there cannoning off the crossbar and we're flagged there for offside but what a brilliant move that was Griezmann into De Jong and what a hit that was Messi on his weak side but he can't quite convert Arthur Mello now in midfield out to Ansu Fati Junior Furpa with a really good run now he's in behind puts it across the box goalkeeper gets there and Messi can't quite get on there to the rebound but we're really getting in behind Osasuna right now putting that pressure on and we're approaching half time here. Osasuna with quite a long free kick here floated in. Wagge doesn't quite get the header right. The ball is in the area. Osasuna have taken the lead completely against the run of play. It was a long ball played up there. To be fair, I didn't think there was any danger on. Maybe I was a little bit lazy there in the header. It's Wagge there across the goal. Terstegen doesn't exactly read it brilliantly. And somehow, Osasuna there, through Brandon Thomas, have the lead. We've got to hit back. This is not good. Can we do that here through Ansu Fati? He's breaking angles out there. Fati into the area, trying to cut it back. It's on to Lionel Messi. Can't quite find a way through. And I've kicked out there in frustration. But we have reached the halftime whistle. It's 1-0 to Osasuna. But most important thing here, don't panic. What I am going to do, though, is make a slight change in our formation and give us there a bit more of an attacking outlet. I'm going to bring on Hiroki Abe. I know that on FIFA, he's got really good pace, good speed there to get in behind Osasuna. And hopefully now, in that second half, we can see some of that. 
Wagay now into Lionel Messi, just pops one off there to Antoine Griezmann. Brilliant first touch there, takes him away from the defender. He's into the area. It's Antoine Griezmann. It's 1-1. Barcelona there equalising. And it was all about that first touch. Brilliant touch there from Griezmann. Takes it away from the defender. We've got ourselves level. Let's not get too overboard there about that goal. It's time now to get the winner. It's 1-0. Barca 1. Osasuna 1. Come on, let's go for another. Here's Cardona though, the ex-Barcelona man in behind and Kerstegen claims that one rail there. Really good throw out as well, right into the path here of Hiroki Abe. What can he do in this kind of game into Messi now? On to Griezmann, it's a good run there by, by Messi as well. Back to Griezmann, Hiroki Abe is the man advancing. It's Hiroki Abe who has his first ever Barcelona goal on his debut. What a moment for him. It was that deep run. He picks the ball up in his half. He plays it on there to Messi. Messi and Griezmann have shown brilliant combination play. And it's that speed in behind. We spoke about it there at halftime. Abe makes the run. And how about that there? Keeps his cool. Scores a goal. What a moment. Osasuna now trying to go for that equalising goal. Testing Ter Stegen there. Gets down really well to his right-hand side. On to Antoine Griezmann. Run again in behind from Hiroki Abe. Showing all that pace. Probably should have put it across the area. I delayed it a little bit. Into Ansu Fati. Doesn't get any power at all behind that finish. But it just shows there the quality that we do have in the final third. De Jong now into Lionel Messi, little give and go there, we always look for that run, Griezmann dropping in, Messi going in behind, Messi one on one, it's 3-1 Barcelona, never ever in doubt, you put Messi there in that kind of area, he will deliver and I love that combination, into Griezmann, little bit of hold up play and just looking round the corner for Messi every single time that ball is on, lovely executed finish there from Lionel Messi, Barcelona with three goals away from home and we are going to leave here. Now, with three points. And there is the final whistle in Pamplona. Barcelona have got the better of Osasuna. We maintain our 100% record in La Liga so far. And I there am a happy man. Let's now get on to the transfer stuff. Where do we need to strengthen? And who are we going to sign? But today, we have the three points. But before that, of course, I do have my media duties to get underway. Let's see what sort of questions I'm asked today, considering you're obviously the favoured team. Do you think Osasuna was intimidated by Barcelona? I get to ask this question a lot here. I'm going to say, yeah, you know what? Again, Osasuna should be intimidated. We're Barcelona, we're coming to town, and we want to win. A comfortable win. Do you think the game could have gone another way today? I would go there. We could have scored more. Because, yeah, we scored three goals today, but we did miss a lot of chances as well. I've got to get better in my conversion rate. And again, Again, they're asking me about Osasuna's players. You know, we just played our game. We're not really worried about who we're coming up against here. We're playing our game. We know our strengths and we won the game today. That's all that matters. But now, if we do move on to deadline day. Yep, I have left it very, very late to make transfers, but I am going to do something before we even start. And it's not actually signing somebody as such, but we are going to be recalling somebody from loan. And actually, yesterday's video on the channel did make me think of this. It's Pedri, the player that we spoke about there, the young man from Las Palmas. I'm going to recall him here because I'm going to give the guy minutes. You can see there, he's got an overall of 73. You feel like he'll rank up pretty quickly. He has talent, and I will give him opportunities this season. But of course, the big question coming into today's video was where exactly were we going to spend that massive transfer budget? 368 million euros. You guys believe, I put a poll out there, I wanted you to decide where that money went. I didn't want to overdo it, I didn't want to go out and sign loads and loads of players. It had to be one forward purchase, and you have gone with Lotaro Martinez. So, let's see if we can get him. All right, so we are going to go here in Cert Milan, the 22-year-old Argentine forward, Lataro Martinez. He's been in brilliant form in real life this season. Barcelona are actively scouting him. We may well approach them for the signing come the summer transfer window. And let's see now if we can get him from Inter. A few people are in the comments saying I won't be able to get him in my first season, but I've got a lot of cash here. But I'm going to start... 50 million euros. I'm not really sure how that's going to go down, if they're going to laugh me out of there, but I'm going to start here at 50 million euros. Let's see here what Inter respond with. Oh, they've, they've not even, they've not put me up much at all. I'm really surprised there. 59 million. Mate, I've got loads of money. You could have asked for way more than that and I would have paid it. But 59.4 million, Lataro Martinez will be ours if we're going to bring personal terms. And like I say that, I was expecting 100 million. In real life, we've been quoted around 112 million euros. So that there 
which is a very, very good deal for Lotaro Martinez. But we've got to sort out the wages. That could be an issue as well. So let's get over that hurdle before we start celebrating. Nice to see you, Lotaro. Looking good, my friend. You look even better in a Barcelona shirt. Let's get on now to your role in the team. You're obviously going to have a crucial role. You're going to play a lot of minutes. You're going to be a player that I need to depend on. And I'm certainly there. I'm sure he's going to be happy with that role. Yep, he's absolutely fine there playing a crucial role. Hopefully the pressure he'll be able to handle at Barcelona. Now we've got to move on to the length of his contract. I'm going to go here with five years, a five-year deal. He's 22 years old. That would take him there till he's 27. That's absolutely fine. Yep, he's fine with that too. And now they want a 100 million euro release clause. Well, no, you're not having it. I don't No, We're going to deny you the release clause. I don't like them. Obviously in Spain, technically you can't deny them anyway. But on FIFA, we have moved on there without a release clause but now I've got to offer some wages. They don't give me any indication here on what they will want. So I'm actually going to go 100k a week. Do you think 100k a week? That's not actually bad in the grand scheme of things for a brand new big marquee signing. I'm going to go 100k a week and 500,000 there in the signing on bonus. And that's not quite good enough. But to be fair, they haven't really pushed me up much more. And like I say, we are swimming in cash. Lataro Martinez is a Barcelona player. And as you can see, guys, we still have over 300 million in our transfer budget. So at the same time, there is still opportunity in January, maybe next summer. I don't know how far this series is going to go, but we will have more chances to bring in players because I don't want to do too much at once. I want to keep this series very realistic. I think bringing in Lataro is a good signing there for a good transfer fee. Recalling Pedri is something that I wanted to do because the emphasis still is on those young players. I want to develop the players that we have. I want to promote from within everything right now that the real Barcelona are not doing enough. That's what we're going to see in this series. And overall this summer, I'm pretty happy. And so as we enter here our fourth game of the La Liga season, Barcelona remain at the top, but Real Sevilla in very close pursuit. And Atletico Madrid there are at the very top of the table also on nine points too. So certainly competition at the top of La Liga. And let's see now what sort of questions I'm going to be faced with in the pre-match press conference for Valencia. After Latoro's acquisition from Inter, the fans are eagerly awaiting him. Are we going to see him tomorrow? What I'm going to say to that is he's going to prove to you tomorrow that he's the right man. He's going to prove to you not just tomorrow, but well beyond that. He will get minutes tomorrow. I can confirm that, guys. You've had a good run so far, putting you in a great position. The challenge for the league, do you think you have the depth to keep up the pace? Yeah, we have the depth. We have the squad. We have the players. If you don't mind me saying we have the manager too. I'm the special one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. But anyway, on to here. Valencia's morale have come with a pretty brutal response. If they're not scared, they should be. Because Barcelona, <laughs> we're coming. But coming into Valencia at the camp now, the big team uses Lataro Martinez will start from the bench. I wanted to start Griezmann in this game, work Lataro in nice and slowly. And we have gone back there to Alba, Longley and Titi and Semedo in the defence with the attack looking much like usual. And I think this right here on ultimate difficulty, Valencia are a good team, of course, Champions League team this season. And it's not going to be easy, but at the camp now, we will expect a result and certainly... I'm going to be hoping to provide it with some nice play along the way. Here we go then for Barcelona against Valencia. Lataro Martinez, I can assure you, at some stage in this game, will make his debut. But from the start, Antoine Griezmann leads the line. And he's been in fantastic form so far this season. Let's do this. Danny Parejo now going forward in midfield for Valencia after coming across the really good challenge there. Ansu quickly moving it on to Lionel Messi. Now Valencia backing off Messi. Oh, Messi! Oh, lovely little bit of skill. Messi here. Shoots on goal. Shoots again. Oh, it's just wide. Oh, I wanted to have a go from distance there because that was absolutely wonderful footwork from Lionel Messi before he tried the volley there on his right foot. What an effort there from Messi and what a goal that would have been. Nice little bit of tackers. Valencia here though with a long range free kick just wide there from Kevin Gamera. Pretty ambitious from that sort of range but that just goes wide there of Ter Stegen's goal. We're going to build out the back here with Nelson Semedo on the right hand side into Sam Titi working it through midfield now onto Messi. Griezmann here, De Jong making one of those runs from midfield. Messi's right next to him. Oh, I thought he was going to touch the ball. De Jong scores. That was a close one there. Two players together. You think on FIFA you don't know how that's going to go sometimes but De Jong this season has been so good good in that kind of area. He's in the holding midfield role alongside Arthur, but he does make those forward runs. And when you've got Griezmann, when you've got Messi, the defence is so focused on marking them that De Jong can just drift into those areas. And when he's been in them, as you can see there, 
Third goal of the season. Into midfield now with De Jong. Oh, I thought, oh, what a ball that is there. Lovely little chip pass into Ansu Fati. was trying to get away from Valencia. Dembele coming in, but he didn't get the right contact there. I was actually trying to volley that, so that didn't exactly go brilliantly. But certainly there, the pace of Ansu, he gets us out of trouble and gets us on the attack. And that there is the half-time whistle. Barcelona lead Valencia thanks to Frank De Jong's goal. And so far, so good at the cap now. Messi now dropping into that deeper role onto Arthur Mello, looking now for the run of Ansu Fati. Back to Arthur Messi, he's arriving on the scene. Lionel Messi! Pushed wide there by our old man Jasper Sillison. Looks absolutely nothing like him, but a great strike there from Lionel Messi. Arthur now going to take the corner kick, going to take it short. I do like to take short corners. Whipped in there by Messi. Sillison just about gets a hand to it. Now falls to Samuel and Titi. On to Semedo here. It's Arthur. He's going to be coming in. Arthur Mello! Oh, I thought that was in. I thought there, the angle of the shot. Brilliant little finesse. And I thought that was going in the top corner. That would have been a wonderful goal there from Arthur Mello. But it's just wide of the target. And here is the moment that Lataro Martinez makes his Barcelona bow at the camp now. Griezmann comes off. Lataro is a star born here. And straight from the off, to be fair, guys, I'm going to be trying to get Lataro a debut day goal. Obviously, I try and get everybody a score, but come on, let's get a goal here for Lataro. Into Ansu Fati, onto the man himself. Nice first touch there into Messi. Lataro makes the run in behind. That's a great save there from Jasper Sillison to deny him a wonderful moment. Arthur Miller receives it in midfield, nods it onto Lataro. Great first touch there, away from the defender, across the goalkeeper, and just wide at the post as well. Another really close miss there from Lataro. Just everything right. It's a brilliant first touch. Goes across the goalkeeper. So, so close. Here's Guedes now for Valencia, and Jordi Alba there just shutting down the danger. Barcelona win again in La Liga. It's just a 1 0 win, but it could have been so more. We had chances there to improve on our goal tally. I want to score more goals at home. No doubt about that. Lataro is so, so close to getting that debut day goal. But in the end, it's Frankie de Jong the hero. Four games, four wins for Barcelona. And if we start here with the post-match press conference, what have they got for me today? Let's have a little look here at the first question. It was somewhat of a disappointing performance from Martin as he failed to make an impression. Uh, excuse me, why is there an option here to walk out? Keep it realistic, mate. He came on, he had an impact, he nearly scored. Give the guy a chance. Get off my back. Don't make me argue here with these journalists. Alba, though, they say, is continuing his hot run of form. But if he doesn't perform for one single second, I'm sure you'll be on his back. But look, we need to keep up this good momentum and we certainly need to keep on the right track in terms of this form. You were able to secure the victory today before half time. Were you pleased with how things went in the second half? And again, we should have put the game beyond doubt. We should be killing these teams off, scoring more goals. But it's early in the season and I've got high, high hopes that will come. And so, guys, that does bring us to an end in today's episode. I leave you here with the La Liga table, Atletico Madrid, Real, Sevilla and Barcelona. They've all got 100% records. It's really tight at the top. We can't afford any mistakes. This is a serious title race that we find ourselves in. And before you do leave, I do have to tell you that in the next episode, which isn't all that far away, you'll be hearing the incredible sounds of the Champions League. <laughs> That is all going to be coming up in the next episode. So remember, guys, please leave a like if you did enjoy this video. I really appreciate that support. And it also helps me to gauge exactly how you guys are feeling. Thank you, as always. I will see you in the next one. But until next time, as always, Vesca El Barca. Oh.